morning, new season. Good morning. Woo! It is nice to hear your voices. It is great to see your faces. Good morning, new season. Family and friends, those of you joining us on Zoom, on Facebook Live, and the beautiful people that are sitting here in front of me, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I hope that you are all here ready to celebrate. But before we get too into our celebration, for those of you who are on Facebook Live, go ahead and share with your family and friends so they can join in as we celebrate our King. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are here to celebrate because Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. He is alive. He is risen. And we can't thank him enough for all of the wonderful things that he has done for us. He came. He performed miracles, he set the example, he sacrificed himself, and now he lives so that we can be connected with God. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's go before God in prayer. Father God, we just thank you right now for who you are, Lord God. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Father God, you are amazing. And we can't thank you for the amount of love that you have for us, that you would give your only begotten son just for us, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father God. Right now, we just pray for all of those that are tuned in, those that are present, I pray that you continue to bless them, continue to heal bodies, just continue to do what only you can do in their lives, Lord God. And if there is anybody that is out there watching, Lord God, who does not know you yet, I pray that today is that day that they will come to know the Savior, Lord God, and have a relationship with you, Father God. Lord, just have your way with us right now and every day, Lord God. And we thank you that we get to celebrate you, not only on today, but every day, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Miracle 1, Jesus turns water into wine. In Cana of Galilee, there was a wedding, and the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, what is that to you and me? My time has not yet come. Jesus' Jesus's mother, Mary, said to the servants, What he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. And Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. So the disciples filled them to the brim. Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it to the master of the feast and he tasted the water that was made wine. And he did not know where it came from, but the servant who drew the water knew where it came from. This beginning of signs and miracles Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Miracle 2, a nobleman's son healed. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, 
where he made water into wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Sir, come down before my child dies. Go your way. Your son lives. The man believed what Jesus said to him and started home. As he was already going down the road, his servant met him and reported that his son was living and was healthy. So he asked him at what time he began to get better. They said yesterday during the seventh hour around 1 p.m., the fever left him. Then the father realized that it was at that very hour when Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he and his entire household believed and confidently trusted in him as savior. This is the second sign attesting miracle that Jesus performed in Cana after he had come down from Judea to Galilee, revealing that he is the Messiah. Miracle three, a man healed at the pool of Bethesda. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel came down at a certain time into, into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well from any disease they had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well and took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured? It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. Who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, who is the man that said, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn. There was a great multitude of people in the place. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews began to persecute Jesus continually because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them. My father has been working until now, and I too am working. Miracle four, feeding the 5,000. After this, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw the signs which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. 
Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered Jesus. 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, Jesus said, Gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing will be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 large baskets with pieces from the five barley loaves, which were left over from those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign attesting miracle that he had done, they began to say, this is without a doubt the promised prophet who is to come into the world. Miracle five, Jesus walks on the sea. Immediately, he directed the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee after he had dismissed the crowds. He went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. The boat was already a long distance from land, tossed and battered by the waves, for the wind was against them. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Immediately, he spoke to them saying, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is really you, command me to come to you on the water. Come. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was frightened and he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus extended his hand and caught him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got out into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those in the boat worshiped him with awe-inspired reverence, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Miracle 6. A man born blind receives sight. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And the disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it's day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said these things, he spat on the ground and made saliva with the clay. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And Jesus said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. 
So the blind man went away and washed and came back seeing. The blind man's neighbors and those who used to know him as a beggar, they said, is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some say it is he. Still others said, no, but he looks like him. But he kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? There's this man named Jesus who made mud and then smeared it all over my eyes. And then he told me, go to Siloam and wash. And so I went and washed and now I received my sight. They asked him, where is he? I don't know the answer. Then they brought the man who was formerly blind to the Pharisees. Now it was on a Sabbath day that Jesus made the mud and opened the man's eyes. So the Pharisees asked him again how he received his sight. And he said to them, He smeared mud on my eyes and then I went to wash and now I see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man Jesus is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner, a non-observant Jew, do such signs and wonders? So there was a difference of opinion among them. Miracle seven, the death of Lazarus. Now a certain man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were only going to stone you recently, and you are thinking about going back there again? Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, in the night he stumbles because the light is not in him. Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. So when Jesus arrived where Lazarus was buried, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother Lazarus. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she left and called her sister Mary privately whispering. The teacher is here and is asking for you. 
And when she heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw how quickly Mary got up and left, they followed her, assuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews who had come with her also sobbing, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not this man who opened the blind man's eyes have kept this man from dying? So Jesus said, again, deeply moved within, approach the tomb. It was a cave with a boulder lying against, covering the entrance. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench where he has been dead four days. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of those people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unwrap him and release him. So then many of the Jews who had come to be with Mary and who were eyewitnesses of what Jesus had done, believed in him. But some of them went back to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him. From your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God, your gift of love they crucify. They
These are seven of the many miracles, signs, and wonders Jesus performed in the scriptures. The resurrection of Jesus is known as the greatest miracle of all, orchestrated through God. Yeah. 
signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe in your power. You know what? The song says, Miracle Worker. Since 2020 and 2021, we see miracles being wrought. <clears throat> He is a miracle worker. And, and, and what's so good about it, not only do we celebrate the resurrection, but guess what? We celebrate his presence in this place. To know that he is alive, not in history, but he's alive in his story today. And let me say this, it is good to see your face and it's good to see your face by Zoom and Facebook, but there's nothing like coming together. There, there's nothing like being together. There's, there, 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 there's, there's, there's nothing like me looking at you and I, I, I see beyond you. What I see is the presence of a savior in you and, and like we used to sing, when all God's children, when the presence of God is in you and we get together, what a time, what a time, what a time. It's good. And let me take this time to say thank you. First of all, to you here in the sanctuary, to you by live streaming, to you who have put all this together, the hard work that has gone into allowing us to be able to worship, whether by technology or whether by actually being, a lot has gone into it. A lot of people taking care. Matter of fact, over a year ago, we, wouldn't, we didn't even know this technology was here. It has evolved. We have learned and we have stretched ourselves. And to each and every one of you, for whatever part you played, the videos, the audios, the singing, the ushering today, whatever part you played, thank you. Thank you, thank you. For you have allowed me to see that, guess what? God is not dead. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. And he's living in and through you. That means I, I, I feel good. James Brown said I can say it too. <laughs> and, and, and I do thank each of you, those of you watching, each of the, the, you who have played a small or a large part. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From the elders to the deacons, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do acknowledge Minister Campbell, and I thank you for being here with us. It is our pleasure to have you in our services, and we pray that God will continue to bless and keep you. And, and do you have a word you want to say, a thanks or anything? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, it's that time again. Time to stand for the reading of the word. Time for the bringing of the word. Time for the hearing of the word. Time for being in the word. Being about the word. It's word up.
Word up. Amen. Word up. Word up. If you would be so kind to turn in your Bibles or your platforms to the 30th Psalm of David. I'm going to ask you to pray for me and pray with me. I invite you to hear the first five verses of this 30th Psalm, and it's David. And, and David is dedicated this song to the opening of the house of God. Now, what I want you to do is listen. Listen carefully and hear the echo of Calvary through these words. This was written by David, who was in the lineage of Jesus. And see if you can hear the calling of Calvary through David's words, generations before Jesus was even born. Listen, I will extol you. O oh Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in resurrection morning. Oh, did I say that? that, that that's, that's not there. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You may be seated. I, I want to talk to you for a few moments on the topic of joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. We're not here by accident. Even though the church is not overflowing like they have been in the past because of Resurrection Sunday, we're not here by accident. We're here because we believe that over 2,000 years ago, there was a person by the name of Jesus specifically who in accordance to the writing of God's word, not only died, not only went into the tomb, not only went into the pit of hell, but guess what? Early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, before the dew, was even dried on the roses and the grass. Before the first bird was able to articulate a song of joy because the Savior had been risen, Jesus got up. Jesus got up. And he didn't get up just because it was time to get up. But he got up for you and for you and for me. That, that, that's why we're here. That's why we come into the sanctuary on Sunday and on Tuesday night Bible study because we believe that Jesus was resurrected from the dead for you and for me. And it wasn't in the middle of the afternoon. It wasn't late at night. <clears throat> Jesus rose early. Early. On Sunday morning. And, 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 and I used to think that it was kind of um, 
fascinating that he did get up and was kind of earth shattering, and it really was. But, but, but if, if, if you look at time, and, and, and we all live in time, even if it's not on time, we live in time. But the Bible does something very peculiar. It says, in the evening and the first dawn was the first day. So in, 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 in God's time, time moves from evening or darkness into light. joy comes into your life when light shines in your life. Joy comes in the morning. And, 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 and if, if we read the resurrection story, we, 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 we know we, we're, we're omniscient in our knowledge about what has happened because we've read it, we've heard it, we've known it, we've lived out what happened on Resurrection Sunday morning. But, 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 but in real time, not our time as omniscient viewers and, and omniscient people who know the story, but in real time, the Bible says that it was early in the morning before it was dawn, early in the morning, before the sun had shined, early in the morning, morning was the order of the day. I don't, I don't know if you caught what I just said. Early in the morning, morning was the order of the day. And I'm not talking about mourning as of a new day. I'm talking about mourning because Jesus, the leader, Jesus, the rabbi, was not with them. He was dead. He was absent. And even hours ago, think about the disciples. Think about those who followed. They had seen Jesus abused and beaten and nailed to a cross. And, and, and they had heard, even if they weren't there, they had heard that he had given up the ghost. And guess what? He died. Their leader died. Someone they had been with for three years, day in and day out, he died. They heard him give up the ghost. And, 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 and now they had to face this dawning of the day. Jesus, their leader, Jesus, their teacher, Jesus, the rabbi, was laying in Joseph of Arimathea's grave. I'm, I'm going to use some vernacular. That is not my normal vernacular. But I can imagine they say, what we do? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? What are the marching orders for this day? Who has the plans? And, and, and not only were they concerned about where they were going to go and what they were going to do, but guess what, folks? Their hearts and their minds were overwhelmed with hopelessness. They thought this Jesus, they thought he was coming to drive out Rome. They thought he was coming as a warrior king. They thought he was coming to liberate Israel. But this morning, in the morning, there was mourning. In the morning, there was mourning. And, 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 and that's my first point. My, my first point is after the crucifixion, darkness prevailed overtaking their future joy. After the crucifixion, 
darkness prevailed overtaking the future joy. Listen, listen. You know the story. Again, I'm going to tell you. You know the story. But they did not know the story. All they knew was the veil had been rent in the tabernacle. All they knew was the earth had quaked and shook and graves had opened and rocks had split and the sun refused to shine. The creative sphere of all life decided to hide its face. I'm not going to shine. Why? Because my creator has been abused and is now dead. I'm mourning this morning. Darkness, not necessarily of the light, but there was darkness. That was the order of the day. There was darkness that prevailed in Israel. Why? Because this God sent son had given up the ghost and now laid someplace. And we had hope that he would deliver us. We had seen the miracles. We have heard his words. And now he lays dead somewhere. What is to become of us? What are we to do? And, 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 and guess what? In your life, in my life, we have had times just like that. Times when we couldn't hear from heaven. Times when it seemed like God was absent. Times when no matter how hard we prayed, we got nothing. And we began to wonder, what are we going to do? I'm so glad that in this time and in this generation, when it gets to that place in my life, what do I do? <coughs> I rely on my hope, my hope in the word of God, my hope in the Jesus who saved me, because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness. I dare not trust a sweeter frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. I'm not going to let any problems, I'm not going to let any circumstances, I'm not going to let anyone overshadow me so that I become down and I become disillusioned with life and living and I don't know what to do. Because when I don't know what to do, I do know what to do. When everything seems to be done and everything doesn't seem to make sense, I know what I can do. I can call on the name of Jesus. Why? Because I serve a living Savior who's in the world today. I know that he's living no matter what men may say. He lives. He lives not just because you say so, but he lives because he lives within my heart. You see, it, 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 it was dark in the hearts, in the minds of people who had followed this Messiah. Darkness not only prevailed in the cosmos, but darkness was in the hearts and minds of those who followed Jesus. You know the story. Some of them didn't have enough courage of their conviction to be there when Jesus was nailed to the cross. These were disciples, men who had been with Jesus, and yet they cowered in a house. Matter of fact, men don't get upset. But the ladies were in the forefront in Jesus' critical hours. Not the men. Some Bible scholar says the only disciple who was there was John the Beloved. 
And what happens on resurrection morning? It's not the men, but it's the women. Boldly. Something just occurred to me. I'm gonna probably get myself in trouble with the men. <laughs> but, 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 I, I think there's something about women and especially women who have born children that far belies what we have in our own spirit as men. I, 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 I know the things that we'll do for our children, but I think after nurturing for nine months inside of a woman, I, I just think they have a connection that we don't have. They have a connection that will allow them to do what we won't do. Now, I'm not saying that you wouldn't die for your children, but I'm saying there's something about a mother and a mother's love and a mother's caring and a mother's nurturing that allow her to say, if I got to die to allow my son or my daughter to live, I'm going to do it. And I think it goes further because they intuitively have a relationship that us guys just don't have with their children. I, I think when Mary got dressed that morning, some of the other women knowing Mary and knowing what the circumstance, we're going to go with her. Now, I, I, I don't know if I'm right, but I, I, I think I'm getting pretty close. I think I'm pretty daggone close. Now, I'm, I'm not a, a theologian, I'm a preacher, but, and, and that's my, my opinion. But I believe there was just something in her that the other woman said, come on, babe, we're going to go with you. Why the men did what? Men did what? Men did what? Stay back. <clears throat> the thing that kind of not disturbs, but it unsettles me is these people had followed Jesus for a long time. Three years, that, that's a long time. They had followed him and, and they had seen miracles and they had heard words of truth coming from out of his mouth. And, 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 and I wonder when they were so distraught had they not remembered his words of Matthew 12 and 40? Had they soon forgotten that Jesus said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Had they forgotten that? Why weren't they planning a celebration? Why didn't they do what they do in New York, get a ball up on top of something and have a countdown of time? Why, why, why weren't they getting prepared for Jesus' resurrection? I, I, I believe because everything that their eyes had seen and everything that they experienced I believe that when you've been in situations that you have never experienced before, when, when you've been in situations too long, I believe that we as people give up hope. And with all they had taken in in that time period, they were hopeless and they felt helpless because they had forgotten Jesus' words. Three days and three nights. And I'm going to share this with you. There are some people who believe that Jesus really was put to death on Thursday because he said three days and three nights. There's no way you can get three days and three nights out of being crucified on Friday and resurrected on Sunday. You can try it. I've, I've tried it. And, and, and I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm telling you, he got up! I don't 
don't care if it was Thursday. I don't care if it was Friday. But on Sunday morning, Jesus got up. From darkness to light. And, 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 and we get in that kind of fix in our own life when things don't go the way they are supposed to go. We look for resolve. But let me give you my second point. Your night season may be longer than three days. But morning comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your that night may be longer than three days. <laughs> but morning is coming. Now, now, now let, 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 let me explain something. God is in time. And he's on time. But he is not time or defined by time. See, see time is a human construct. That's why we spend time in yesterday and dreaming about tomorrow when we're not living in today. That's why when you go back and you're still trying to remember that situation, that circumstance you were in, and you messed up and you flubbed up and you want to try to get it off your conscience and off your heart and everything, and you're wondering why Jesus isn't helping you. Part of the problem is because you're in yesterday. You've heard me say before, he is a very present help. That means he's present and while you're back in yesterday and living in tomorrow, you're forgetting about today. Matter of fact, there, was, there used to be a, a little cartoon section. It was called, it wasn't high and low. It was Lucy. No, it wasn't Lucy. I can't think of the name, but anyway, I remember the, they had one sketch and the sketch says, today is the present, that's why. Today. Oh, well, I can't remember it. Today is the present, though. That's what it said. That's what you need to know. Today is the present. And it was spelled present, but it also meant presence. Today is your gift. Today is your day of salvation. Today is the day of blessing. Today is today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't be caught up in yesterday. All yesterday does is rob today of its joy. Live in today. Live in the now where Jesus resides, where he lives. Because look, you can take all the watches you have, you can lick them, and they can take a ticket. But what? guess what? It is not hurrying God. The old folks, they, they, they had a saying. He may not come. What, what, he may not come what? He may not come how you want him. But he's coming right on time. And, and what is on time? On time is his time. When he's ready, and even in the crucifixion, even as we gather here today, we know that Jesus was in the earth three days and three nights. Why? Because he said so. And once again, I don't care what day it was, Friday, what you call it, he got up when he was ready. And I'm here today to tell you that if you're ready, he's ready. In your situation, in your circumstance, in your event, in your downtrodden, you may want it over right now, but God's saying, stay there, stay there, stay there. And, and, and the reason you've got to stay there is because he's got a Romans 8 and 38 for you. He has an all things are working together for your good. If you are the called, He's working it out for your good. That means that nighttime is going to come. In our life, we're going to have some nighttime, just as Jesus had a night come after the cross. Nighttime's coming. I'm telling you today, hang in there. There used to be a saying, fake it until you make it. No, faith it until you can make it.
Don't tell people lies. Faith it until you know you can make it. Your night season may be longer than three days, but morning comes. And, and, and it may seem like an eternity, but listen, folks, we have to learn how to endure. See, a problem besets us, and the first thing we're doing is we're saying, Jesus, deliver us. Jesus didn't say in this life, you might have trials and tribulation. He said they were coming. In this life, you will have tribulation, but, 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 but there's a, a but there. And, 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 and it means something. It means that everything else that is said prior to that is conditional on the but. Jesus knows how to deliver you and heal you and walk with you and encourage you. And, and listen, even when you feel like you don't have enough to have enough, when you're about to give in and give out, Jesus knows how to carry you when you think you're all by yourself. You, 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 you remember the poem that used to be popular a number of years ago called Footprints? And, and why it resonated in everybody, because we thought we were alone. But Jesus said, no, nah, baby, you got it wrong. Th th those, those footprints aren't your footprints. Those are my footprints, because I carried you when you couldn't carry yourself. When it gets so dark that you can't see your way, know that God is carrying you. All you got to do is learn to endure. Don't be quick to get out of it. Learn to endure in the Hebrew. <laughs> The word endure means this, to lodge, to stop over, to pass the night. It's someone who lodges but passes on. That means, in other words, and, and, and I know that some of y'all are not going to like this, get comfortable with troubles. Get comfortable with troubles. Learn how to work through them. Listen. There's not a single person in here who will not deny that as much exercise as we don't do, we don't do it because guess what? It's uncomfortable, it hurts, it takes time and we don't feel like putting the time in. But the thing about it, when you put the time in, guess what happens? After a while, when you've learned to endure the little, the lot becomes secondary and you got it in your bag. It's all taken care of. It's easy. So, my friends, know this, that the enemy can't throw anything at you that you can't deal with. The enemy can't throw anything at you that you can't do. I, I, I know that we always seem to feel at times like the enemy had his way. No, 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 no. You, you, you're a Romans 1.12. No, it's John 1.12. You, 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 you are one of the king's kids. You, you, you have a father who art in. You, you have a father that sits high and looks low. Do you think if you consider yourself a king's kid that your father's going to allow you to be destroyed? Do you think that God puts you, us, allows us to be in situations where we're going to drown? Nah. God's trying to strengthen us, just like the person exercising, trying to strengthen us, trying to do something good for us. We've got to learn to endure. 
tell this situation, I'm here camping out for a short while, but I'm not staying here forever, so get the room ready for the next person because just as soon as my feet hit glory, I'm out of here. Tell the enemy, tell the devil, tell the circumstance, I'm not here to stay, but I'm here to learn. And as soon as I learn the lesson, I'm gone. The enemy can't have his way with you. It may be days, weeks, months, years may pass, but there's a promise that is unfulfilled. But I'm here today to tell you that eventually weeping that you endure will launch into a nighttime that will pass away and the sun will dawn and the new day will bring deliverance. Before the manifestation of the resurrection, if you read, there was a violent earthquake. Celestial beings were descending from heaven and rolling away the stone. And, and so it is with us. Right before the night flees, before the dawn begins to stir, there will be a shaking and that shaking has a purpose. I, I, I don't know if you ever thought about it, but why was there an earthquake? Why did the earth move? It had to move to move that stone. And it moved the stone, and I've said this before, not that Christ could get out, but so we could get in. We had to see that he who said three days and three nights, and it's over, got up. There will come a rocking in your life. That's why it says, be not weary in well-doing. Don't faint, because at the point where you're about to give up, your victory comes. You're at the point of breakthrough. So there was a breakthrough. There was a shaking that died. Matter of fact, read the Bible. The Bible says that the earth even vomited its dead. It couldn't stand it. The moon, when the epileptic seizure began to drip blood, there was a calamity going on. That's why, because God had yet to move. When you go through, God alone knows how to move the roadblocks and the hindrance out of your way. And sometime in the process, things get shaken. But understand that when it's in shaking, it's only the beginning of your destiny and joy. Turn with me to Ecclesiastes 3.11. Are you there? Says he has made everything what? Beautiful in its time. He has made what? Everything. That's a hookup to Romans 8.20. Every, every, everything. It's for your good. It's to get you to and through to your destiny. Jesus had to go through the grave to get our salvation. He had to endure it for three days and three nights for our salvation. Once again, quit trying to get out of it so quick and say, Lord, teach me what I need to know, what I need to see from this experience. That's what you ought to be asking him. God has made everything beautiful in its time. Joy is interrupted by, joy interrupts weeping. Praise interrupts weeping. The psalmist has declared praise. Now look at 30 verse 4. It says, sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. There are some of us in here and some of us by way of the platform and some of us by way of life. When things get rough, we get spiritual laryngitis. We lessen the volume of our praise. 
Let me tell you something. Whenever you're getting to fix a situation, if you can just lift a finger and, and, and begin to sing, even if you don't know anything to sing, sing Jesus. Sing Jesus. Sing Jesus. Well, why would I do that, preacher? Because at his name, Everything that's unlike him has got to leave. It's got to depart. And when you say it long enough and loud enough, you'll go through your period of darkness into light. How do you know, preacher? Because I've been there before. Now, I didn't say before, but I said before. See, before. Before the foe. That's why I said before instead of before. I have been before him, and I have to remind him first who I am, and I'm one of the king's kids. And then I got to remind him who my daddy is. And when I began to talk to him about my daddy, and he understands who I really am and whose I am, Satan has got to flee. Amen. That's what a praise will do. Just like a couple weeks ago, I, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. Oh, y'all act like y'all don't know that. <laughs> Maybe you haven't been in a diabolical situation yet. Maybe life has not taken you to that place. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes when you get in that place, Bible reading ain't going to get it because it's going to feel like it's not doing anything. And praying won't do it. Because it seems like God's line is busy. But I'm here to tell you today, when you call on his name, he knows how to show up. Because the Bible said he's looking to and fro, seeing someone looking for someone who's going to worship him and praise him. Even if you don't feel like it, learn how to will your will. Let me finish this thing up. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going too long. <laughs> Lamentations. Let, let, let's go to Lamentations. <laughs> lamentations 3. I'm going to read you 22 and 23. <laughs> Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Some, some, somebody stand up and read that next verse. I'm just, just, just the A phrase. So, somebody, anybody. Someone got a big mouth like me. Come on, the whole lot of you in this place, come on. Somebody read it, yeah. They are new every morning. That, 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 okay, you read both of them, I just wondered one. Okay. They, are they are new. You know what every means? Everything. That's what it means, everything. Do, do, thank, thank you, Mr. Chandler. Do, do, do you see that? Do you see that? I, I want you to get that into your spirit. Because some of us even now are in a nighttime experience. We've been looking and we've been praying. I'm telling you, just turn on the frequency of your heart radio to Romans 8, 28. Instead of looking at the dilemma, don't let the dilemma define you. Let the lesson define you. Let God define you. Let God make you. The disciples found that weeping indeed tarried for more than a night. That entire week they had gone through nighttime and dark night experiences. There were fear in their heart, but Sunday morning, they still were in the same place. But all of a sudden, the Bible said that Mary went running and she came back and told Peter that the Savior has risen. So that joy became the order of the day. Joy became the order of the day, not just joy, but unspeakable joy came on that resurrection morning. Listen, we all face struggles that seem to never end, trials too great to endure, heartaches that seem beyond hope, 
Yet our God makes an unmistakable promise. He promised us that life will not be easy. He promised us that troubles might seem endless, dark nights long, fears and despair will come, but we will cry out like David and Jesus, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's dark in those times. It's dark in those situations. But that morning, Mary was walking to the grave fretting. She didn't see how anything was going to help her get to Jesus. But the Bible says it was early on the first day of the week. While it was still dark, the stone was already rolled away. I'm here today to tell you, life will tell you, you may have trouble. That's what Mary thought. She had some trouble. Who will help me? Roll away the stone. But Jesus said, you'll have tribulation. He also said, I'll give you a promise that while it's still dark, while your heart is still heavy, while you are in a bad situation, the morning does come. Morning comes. Morning comes and joy comes with the morning. Joy comes and I'm here today to ask you, do you believe this promise of God today? Will you listen to Jesus call your name? He's calling you, telling you it's morning time. Will you listen to him call? Will you obey his call? Will you know that his call is real? Will you let him bring joy into your life? No matter what the circumstances, Jesus promised that joy comes in the morning. Joy. Joy, Jesus, joy comes in the morning. I got one more scripture and I'm going to get out of here. But some of y'all have reservations to get something to eat. I got one last scripture. You ready for this? Psalm 30. It says, at the 11th verse. You have turned for me my morning in the morning. Y'all see that? You have turned for me my morning into what? You have put off my sackcloth and gave me what? To the end that who glory may do what? To who? And not be silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give what? Do, 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 do you know what he's saying? Do, do, you, do you know what he's saying? Can, 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 can you feel it? That, that, that's something we have to do. I know this was Resurrection Sunday, but I'm trying to help you see that Resurrection Sunday was about Jesus. Uh huh. It was about Jesus. And I'm here today to tell you that December 25th, supposedly, that, that's about us. You know why I say it's about us? Because what did the innkeeper tell Joseph? I'm here today to tell you this is resurrection day, but if Jesus has not been born in your heart, if there has been no room to receive him in your heart, this day means absolutely nothing to you. Nothing. You've got to let them get into your heart. You've got to let them walk you through some nighttime experiences. You've got to believe that he is who he says he is and he did what the Bible said he did. And if you do that, your night times won't last forever, but you'll go through your night times with, guess what, An, a, a flashlight. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it what? Shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it what? Even in the darkness, I'm going to let it what? Now, the Bible says, and this is essential, Mary had discovered that the stone had been moved, and she told Peter and John. She was encouraged by two angels. 
to tell somebody. The mission and vision statement of this church is to make disciples. To tell somebody that he lives. To tell somebody that Jesus lives. To tell everybody that Jesus, that's your J-O-B. That's your job description. That's what God is holding you accountable for. He got up. And my question is, are you going to get up for him? Matter of fact, let me see something. I know you can't do it, but yes, you can. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus, you soldiers of the cross. Tell somebody that he indeed lives. He got up for you, or you get up for him. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my what? It ain't about me. It ain't about to preach word. It's about Jesus getting up. What do you say after that? Jesus. Jesus got up. Amen. The question is, do you have room in your heart for him? Amen. Amen. He did what he was supposed to do. With all power in his hands, he got up. And he created, he was the bridge, he was the gap filler so that we would have restored relationship with God the Father. Amen. The question is, do you have room in your heart? Amen. And so at this time, we open the doors of the church. We have three calls, very simple. One, for salvation. You know, you know, you know, if you've made room in your heart for him. If you haven't, this is an opportunity to make room in your heart for him. You've dealt with so much in your life. And he said, weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. That joy is Jesus Christ, amen? Won't you welcome him into your heart? That second petition is you've welcomed him into your heart but for some reason, you got busy with life. And you filled your heart with other things. And you pushed Christ out. The thing I love about Jesus is he's the God of a second chance. A third chance, a fourth chance, a thousandth chance. And this petition is to you. As you come to yourself and say, you know what? I've pushed Christ out, but now it's time to let him back in. And he's here, standing. You are that somebody. He says, I'll leave the 99 to go after the one. Are you the one? We're here. He's here. That third petition is, you are looking for a ministry to call home. I think I say this every time I'm up here. There's a couple times that I didn't say it. But you know, we have a man and woman of God who is uniquely qualified. Amen. Go ahead, Miss. It's, it's all right. You can clap. We can brag on our man of God. He's uniquely qualified to instruct you in righteousness so that you you can understand your purpose and be propelled into your destiny. Build in the kingdom. Amen. And so we have a connection card that we put up uh, for those who are online. Whether it's Zoom or Facebook Live. If you would fill that connection card out, whether it's salvation, rededication or church membership, I promise you, you have my word. We will reach out to you.
and we will connect with you. Amen. Salvation, rededication, church membership. We stand with arms wide open. Amen. And if it's taken a few minutes, it's okay. And if somebody's in the congregation, if you say, man, I, I don't want to be the first one to come, put your hand up. I'll, go, I'll walk down with you. It's that important. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit desires relationship with you. Amen. Amen. We won't prolong the service. Uh, there are a couple announcements that we want to hit before we close out. Amen. As you know, Bible study on Tuesday night, Bible study on Tuesday night, Bible study on Tuesday night at seven o'clock. Uh, I, I will say that our numbers are growing on the Zoom platform. And so we want to thank everybody uh, for making that sacrifice to come together as we wrestle with the text, as the man of God says. And so your growth and development takes place in Bible study. If you really want to grow in the Lord, if you really want to have a grasp of the word, we do it in Bible study. We do it in Sunday school at nine o'clock, amen? We also do it in teen study at 6.30 at Friday on, on Friday night. We have everybody covered, amen? And so what we're really trying to do is eliminate any excuse on why we can't study the Bible, right? And so now we're doing it online. And hopefully we'll be doing it back in person soon. Amen. Amen. A couple more announcements. Uh, don't forget to sow a seed. Uh, we believe that uh, your faithful giving, um, God opens the windows of heaven to pour blessings out upon us. Let me back up. When you do, when you obediently give, you open yourself up to the promises of God. I don't just want to leave it to the windows of heaven, right? That's just one promise. There are a whole lot of other promises that are attached to our faithful and obedient giving. Amen. Uh, last but not least, when we RSVP, when we RSVP, when we RSVP, um, once the site closes, it closes. Um, and so right now we're only doing uh, 50 people. Eventually we're gonna open it up more, uh, but really it, 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 it's the first 50 that sign up, amen? And so what we ask um, is that you not call uh, Lady D, you don't call uh, Alicia, uh, Bridges, you don't call pastor, right? It, 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 it's the first 50 to sign up. Again, we're doing it for safety purposes and safety protocol. We want to ensure that everybody is safe. And so again, it's the first 50 that sign up. Um, we open the, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll be able to come into the building. And like I said, again, Eventually that number will get bigger and bigger, but right now we want to ensure everyone's safety. You know the first thing they do? Oh man, over at new season, somebody got COVID and it's on the six o'clock news. Y'all act like y'all ain't never heard nothing like that before. Come on. And so again, we just want to do, we, we want you safe. We want you safe. We want you safe. Amen. And so we ask that you would honor that. Uh, and again, um, sign up do the rsvp i'm not gonna lie to you it goes fast we opened it up on sunday by tuesday we had already we already have 50 people which is an indication people want to get back into the building right so don't wait don't wait get after it right now amen man of god have i missed anything <laughs> sweetheart have i missed anything Okay, all right. You want to go ahead and close us out in 30 seconds or less? She can pray, can't she? <laughs> Father God, we just thank you once again for who you are 
and for the love that you have for us, Father God. Yes, God. I pray that we continue to celebrate throughout the rest of this day and the rest of our lives. Jesus is alive. We love you, Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs>